And they're like, this book is so fun. And I'm like, is the fun in the room with us right now? Hello gorgeous, my name is Mina, welcome to my channel Mina Reads and today I'm trying to do a 24 hour readathon and I'm so scared y'all. So I have never done a 24 hour reading challenge before, I did do a 48 hour reading challenge and that was really fun so I'm hoping that this is going to be fun and not stressful but the thing that is causing me a little bit of stress and a little bit of anxiety is that I don't know what book I want to read first. I have a lot of books on my currently reading shelf on Goodreads right now and so ideally I could or should not knock those out but I also just finished watching the new season of Heartstopper and so now I want to read Heartstopper volume 4 and also the Nick and Charlie novella so I'm like do I read those do I read these other books that are on my TBR I'll show you some of the books that I'm like currently in the middle of so I am currently reading Twisted Lies by Anna Huang um so there's that and then I have this YA romance, Her Good Side by Rebecca Weatherspoon. I've only read like the first few pages of this. I think maybe like the first uh, 20 pages or so. But yeah, this is a YA romance about these two young teens. They decide to like fake date for a school dance. Then I'm also like 30 pages into this book, which is called The Three of Us by Ore Akbaje Williams. I'm in the middle of this manga is called Kowloon Generic Romance. I think I'm like, I want to say I was like halfway through this when I put it down. I don't know how many pages that is because there's no numbered pages. So maybe I'll finish this. I don't know. But then also, also in addition to all of those possibilities, I am... I just completed this book called The Hanged Man by Katie Edwards and I could potentially read the next book in that series which is called The Hourglass Throne um, and that is like a queer urban fantasy series and it's so good and I really really love The Hanged Man so I kind of want to continue on with the series. It's just like I don't know. I don't know which way I'm going uh, so we'll see what I end up reading first but let me go ahead and grab my phone so I can start a timer and we're going to start this little 24 hour readathon and see what I end up reading. All right y'all so we've started the clock. minutes into the challenge and I'm holding the book upside down uh, so I just finished Kowloon Generic Romance and I believe I read like around a hundred or so pages because I was already on page 90 um and so Kowloon Generic Romance is about these two people Hajime and uh, I believe the girl's name is Raiko Raiko maybe I think is a realtor she lives in Kowloon which is like this walled city and yeah so it's about her and Hajime they work their co-workers in this realty office and they frequently like go to lunch together and all this type of stuff and uh Raiko has a crush on Hajime and so yeah it's basically about her sort of pining after him being a little bit obsessed with him and them dealing with like their city their community yeah like I don't know how to how exactly to explain it because it's sort of a slice of life so there's not a whole lot happening plot wise but at the end we get introduced to this huge like plot twist um so I'm very intrigued to read the next volume and it was interesting I think the illustration was really fun um and I do like the main girl character I'm not a huge fan of Hajime personally but it was pretty good I don't think I'm gonna give it a rating though so now that I finished that I really want to go on a walk because I haven't left my house in like two days and it just feels a bit egregious. So I want to go on a walk so I think I might do an audiobook while I'm on my walk. So I do have the audiobook for, um, for Twisted Lies so I could listen to that. Or I could listen to the audiobook for The Hourglass Throne. And I'm gonna grab my headphones. These are my emotional support headphones. Like, I love wearing them so much. They just bring me so much comfort and peace. And they're like noise canceling. I'm obsessed with them. Anyway, um, yeah, so I'm gonna head out. 
we're gonna do this little hot girl walk and hopefully I will get some good reading time in. Before we get into the 24-hour readathon, I did want to mention some really huge news. I've been working with Trova Trip to organize a potential trip for us to go on in 2024, and all the details are finally finalized, and so I can finally announce to you all that we're going to be going to Costa Rica. So thank you to everyone in my YouTube community page who responded to the survey that I put out a few weeks ago. This was voted for by you guys. I was actually a little bit surprised by the results, but a lot of you guys voted for Costa Rica, so I've been working for the past two weeks or so to figure out like a fun itinerary for us to go on so this is going to be a seven day trip the trip is set for may 1st through the 7th it's a seven day trip with some meals excursions accommodations and airport transfers included um some of the main excursions that i'm really excited about there's going to be like a farm visit and we're going to have a meal prepared for us from like the fresh ingredients from the farm there's going to be a waterfall visit there's going to be a natural hot springs resort that we get to go to there's going to be kayaking snorkeling days on the beach all that good stuff trip is priced at two thousand five hundred and fifty dollars but the first eight people to book will get a two hundred and fifty dollar discount so those first eight people will be able to book for two thousand two hundred and ninety nine dollars so if you are looking for a discount you will want to snag your tickets early and at the time of booking you only have to pay 25 percent down and you could pay the rest off over time um at your own discretion but they do like the trip to be paid up about 90 days prior to the trip date and if that doesn't work for you they also have payment plans that you could sign up for through a firm and all that information and like how to do that will be on like the landing page of the booking page that I'm going to send you to in the link that's in my description below so if anybody's interested in traveling with me for spring 2024 in Costa Rica like it will be so amazing to have you um and I'm just I'm so excited like I'm so hyped for this um I hope some of you guys are excited about this as well after you check out the booking page if you have any additional questions do be sure to let me know in the comments below and i will try to get to them as soon as possible um to make sure that you all feel comfortable with like the trip yeah so if you have any questions be sure to let me know and i will be talking more about the trip as things evolve but i did just want to like throw this in this vlog really quick just to let you know as soon as possible that the trip is on it is happening so that you can start planning things out i know that it is kind of like just coming out of nowhere for some people if you're not checking my youtube community page i did want to throw this in here to just give you some time to check it out i'll also be answering questions about this over on my instagram for like the rest of the week so if you have any questions you can leave them there you can dm me on instagram if you'd like to talk more in depth it's all good uh i'm so hyped about this trip though i hope you guys are really excited as well oh my god it would be so cool to be able to meet some of my book besties in person and you guys have just been on like a reading journey with me for the past five years that i've been running my channel and so it would be amazing to be able to meet some of you on this trip um so i hope that we can make the trip happen i hope that some people are interested and yeah so let's get into the vlog I hi friends so i am back from my walk and we are an hour and 32 minutes into this reading challenge and i did end up reading the hourglass throne on my walk okay anyway so that's what the hourglass throne looks like and i guess i should give you a better synopsis of what this series is about if i'm going to continue reading this so the tarot sequence is about this character named rune st john and he is sort of like the he's the last scion of the sun court and the tarot sequence is based on like the tarot arcana so all of the tarot cards um those people exist like the tower lady justice the hanged man like all that all those characters they exist and they 
make up this like ruling class in this atlantean society and the atlantean society is based on like the lost city of atlantis kind of um and so yeah there's like all of this magic our main character rune is a part of this ruling class but when he was young i think he was like when he was a teenager um his family's court was raided everybody was killed besides him and his bonded companion brand and so him and brand have been sort of struggling their way through life since then and they had taken to being sort of private investigators and doing like freelance work for other more powerful arcana because rune has like no money and no power despite having a title and so this is the third book and so as the series goes on we see rune like kind of growing more and more into his power and um as a result of that he is finally like being formally crowned as an arcana um new lord son and so he's like trying to manage his new estate and all of his new responsibilities as like a full-fledged member of the arcana with like a court and subjects and responsibilities and things like that but at the core of its at the core of the series i want to say that each book plot wise sets up a mystery so the first book is a mystery where rune and his companion bran are trying to find this missing guy named adam um and adam later becomes rune's boyfriend so yeah and then in the second book there is this scary dude who is trying to kidnap rune's uh adopted son max and so they're trying to figure out what is this scary dude's plan why he's trying to kidnap max and how to stop him so there's sort of like some mystery elements involved there and then this book um i'm not like completely sure what the main mystery of this one is going to be they did introduce this thing where there was attack on this place called a rejuvenation center and in this world immortality doesn't necessarily exist but but like the arcana the powerful ruling class people they can go to places called rejuvenation centers and it kind of like sets their biological clock back to a certain age so people can become younger um and so yeah there was like an attack on a rejuvenation center and everybody was murdered and so they're trying to figure out what's going on there but also rune like i said he is finally being like fully instated as a arcana so he is about to have his coronation coming up and he's like very stressed with all of this newfound like power and responsibility that he has um and yeah but i really am enjoying this series it's very interesting and the the magic system and the world building is kind of really unique has a really good found family aspect to it it's incredibly queer so it's just so good and so amazing and i love the relationship between rune and brand and like i mentioned brand is rune's bonded companion so they have like this magical bond that was forged when they were babies and they are just kind of like stuck together and i love them i'm obsessed with them i'm like madly passionately deeply obsessed with them and i love their dynamic so much because they're pretty much like platonic soulmates and it was actually really crazy there was this conversation conversation between rune and his boyfriend where his boyfriend like explicitly states i know that i will never be the love of your life because i cannot compete with brand like the relationship that you have with brand is just too powerful it's too deep you have too much history i'll never compete with him but i'm happy to be in your life in any way i can how insane is that so the dynamic between rune and brand is just very interesting uh i love the fact that they're like platonically raising a child together how iconic um and rune's boyfriend also lives with them and rune's boyfriend is raising his little brother so they're just building like this massive family in this like queer platonic polycule and it's very interesting and it slays i i'm enjoying it quite a bit so like i said i'm 71 pages into it and i think i might continue reading uh that one while i was on my walk i did end up stopping and just like taking a seat and i tried to read a little bit of the three of us but i don't know i just wasn't feeling it at this particular moment i wanted to um, say that this book is so weird and interesting i mean i like it and everything but it's so odd because it's a fantasy and they sort of live in like a cordoned off society that's like away from the human world but they still have to interact with the human world and they in some ways and they still discuss the human world and like human affairs and stuff like that and so there was like a mention of the fact that like 
COVID-19 happened and like the human world is still in quarantine but they're not in quarantine because they have magic and so they've like magically solved the coronavirus and it just so it is so bizarre like it was so weird and I feel like the mention of the coronavirus was such a non-event that it was like why are we even discussing it why is it even a thing why is it here I don't think we needed it but you know I'm just the reader not the writer I don't make the choices around here but that was a very interesting perhaps unnecessary choice I think that you should give this series a shot but you should like read a sample of like the first few chapters to see if the writing style and the sense of humor is going to work for you because the tone is very like silly screwball comedy vibes and so i think that if you don't like the the humor and the tone you probably won't have a fun time reading the book so i will say that that would be my only um concern for anybody who's thinking about picking it up but it's very good and it can also be really dark in some ways so i enjoy the humor and like the levity that the dialogue and the banter provides so yeah i'm having a good time and i'm finally coming around to the relationship between rune and his boyfriend adam his boyfriend adam gets introduced in the first book and like adam is pretty much the plot of the first book where they're trying to find adam because he's like been kidnapped and stuff and i think that I just feel like some of the development of his relationship with Adam is just sort of treated almost as a given like you're just supposed to understand that they just like both like each other and they're like going to be committed to each other but it just doesn't feel like there was a lot of development in the way of like making that happen so it more so felt like a one-sided infatuation on Adam's part with Rune who saved him and he calls Rune hero and everything that's like his pet name for him and so I just felt like I don't know if their relationship is giving but finally in book three which is perhaps a bit too far but finally in book three I do feel like I'm finally attached to their relationship I think their relationship has been cute the whole time but I am finally at the point of like actively shipping them and like swooning when I see them interacting on the page. So it's been a long journey, but we finally made it there. So here we are, dude. It's like hour seven and I am 171, 171 pages into the hourglass throne. And I don't want to say too much because I really don't want to spoil the whole series or spoil the whole plot. But there is this one element where... I think I've mentioned it has like a really strong found family vibe because Rune the main character he has like this adopted son named Max and then Rune's boyfriend Adam has this little brother named Quinn that he takes care of and so Quinn and Max are both like 15 16 years old um, and they are always getting into some kind of trouble and some stuff happens in this book and they end up getting kidnapped again this is the second time they've gotten kidnapped in the series maybe like the third or fourth time they stay getting kidnapped okay but there was a scene where rune is like i'm gonna kill a lot of people over this shit and we're gonna get our kids back slay it just reminded me so much of the scene in like the new avatar movie the blue people movie where the kids also get kidnapped and the parents are like fuck this like we gotta get our babies back i love that i love that like overprotective mama bear papa bear vibe I love it power couple going to save their children I love to see it and I also talked about how like yes yeah, a found family and it's cool because it's like this queer platonic polycule of adults taking care of their like harem of children harem of children is not the right term but they're like large pod of children there's a lot of children that they are like taking care of but Max and Quinn are like the oldest ones and then there's another one named Lane and I think Lane might be around about the same age as Max and Quinn but he's off doing some other stuff he's busy but it's just like it, I just love it I just love the found family I love the overprotective vibes and I'm loving the plot and usually I'm not one to enjoy a sort of mystery type plot line and there is or there was a bit of a mystery going on like there's a conspiracy they're trying to figure out what's going on who are the players involved what are their motivations and everything like that and we did just get like a huge break 
in the case so to say and one of the major conspirators just kind of like showed themselves and gave like a little villain monologue and it was really fun and like really action-packed and i just am loving it and i think i'm loving it because i'm more of a character driven reader than i'm a plot driven reader and so because i really like the characters so much and i enjoy the narration and just like the general tone of the book i'm enjoying the mystery plot line a lot more than i would in any other story so i'm having such a fun time with this like this is so good marbles right now okay i you don't understand i love this book so much that i'm going crazy okay so right now where i'm at in this story and something that's like really important to the entire series thus far is the fact that rune when he was like 15 his court and like his family and everything they were all brutally murdered in this raid and rune experienced like an extreme trauma he was attacked by several men and tortured and assaulted for a long period of time it's a huge trauma in his life and it's something that he you know frequently kind of recalls and a trauma that he's still like working through and um he's also trying to like find out who these people were that did the raid what were their motivations and also like tracking down his attackers and like killing them and in the first book he kills like one of his attackers uh we love revenge and he's trying to figure out like these other people and what's going on and so there's like an overarching storyline throughout the series of about this like grand conspiracy that led to the fall of his court when he was like a child right and so like this trauma is so well handled i think that it's it's not something that like overpowers the narrative but it's just it's always there and i feel like the way that it's discussed the way that the people in rune's life treat him they don't treat him like he's you know fragile and breakable or anything like that but there's just such like care and consideration and the way that rune has this incredible support system of people who really love him and that he feels safe with is just so beautiful and it just means a lot to me and so there's some plot stuff happening i'm not gonna like fully spoil the plot stuff but there's some plot stuff happening that is making a lot of these memories um come to the surface again and um rune is you know thinking about all of this trauma and he's just dealing with it and there's a lot of really like emotional really fraught moments occurring around that and there have been a lot of moments between rune and his boyfriend adam and between rune and his companion bran and like all of them as a trio and there's like this evolving dynamic in their relationship that is just so fascinating and i just feel like i just feel i don't even know what i feel but i just feel like overcome with emotion like i love the character dynamics in this so much and i think it's some of my favorite character dynamics i've read maybe all year like i just feel like ugh, i just feel so passionate about it like it's just so good there's a scene and rune is talking with his boyfriend adam and he's talking about bran rune and adam have conversations about bran very frequently it's like just let him join a relationship at this point but they're always having conversations about bran and so rune says that i always know i'm the most important person in his world i always know that his smart ass comments are grounded in one single concern me through all the darkness all the horrible times i've had the most extraordinary life because he's in it i can't lose him and then adam said would it surprise you to know that i cannot bear the thought of losing brandon either and i'm like i'm obsessed with their dynamic together i'm obsessed with their dynamic so badly and i i want to know what bran is thinking like i wish bran had his own pov because i just i find him so fascinating he's one of my favorite characters and so i wish that he had like a little bit more page time but i just like oh my god i just like oh my god they love each other they're so devoted to each other they're it's just ugh. i'm feeling so many feelings so 
I'm like 70% of the way through the book now, which is how many pages? Let's double check. Um, that's 300 pages. So I'm 300 pages into the book, 70% of the way through. It's incredible. I love it. I'm standing. It's so good. So yeah. And let's also let's have a little check in with the time. How are we doing? We are 11 hours into our challenge and I'm pretty close to being finished my second book. So I'm proud of myself. Yeah, it's going so we're like 15 hours into this challenge. I'm sleepy. And I just finished the Hourglass Throne and I think I'm going to give it four stars. I really enjoyed it. I think it's probably the best book in this series thus far. I think that each book gets better and better. Eagerly anticipating the fourth book, um, there's still no release date for it, no um, cover reveal yet either, so who knows when that's coming out, but I did have fun reading this. I am glad that I got to it, and I'm trying to figure out what it is that I'm going to read next. Um, I'm thinking... I'm thinking that I will either try to get into Twisted Lies this evening or I will read um, Heartstopper Volume 4. We'll see. Um, but yeah, I I'll keep you updated. So fucking cute five stars is so sweet i love those boys um and i really like that this volume is really heavily about charlie and his mental health journey um and i just appreciated seeing uh, not necessarily like completely resolved but i appreciated seeing the continuation of that storyline because it does get brought up in season two of heartstopper and it was definitely something that was like in the back of my mind I kept thinking about it and I wanted to know how that storyline was going to wind up how it was going to be dealt with and so I like the way that this volume discussed his mental health and um Charlie actually like getting help and like inpatient treatment and all that kind of stuff and I feel like it did a lot to sort of demystify like mental health treatments and stuff like that and I just appreciate it it's like a very informational um volume i want to say when it comes to eating disorders and like ocd and other mental health topics and like therapy and all that so i appreciated it a lot and it was very good so i gave it five stars i can't wait for volume five which is coming out in december 2023 um and yeah like that's that's the end of that statement i'm not sure how how far we are in let me do a time check so here we go we are on hour 17 y'all um and so i think i think now it is finally time to get into this massive chunker this book is 500 pages i think that that's insane so twisted lies by anna huang um this is a contemporary romance fake dating we got this influencer girly named stella and she needs to kind of she needs to zhuzh up her brand a little bit things are getting a little stale engagement is lower and she thinks a way to raise her engagement would be to have a boyfriend which is true like relationship posts always do really well on social media and so she is you know going to she's was trying to find like a real date kind of and trying to find somebody in the social media space that she could fake date but that's not going too well for her so she decides to fake date her landlord and his name is christian um and christian is like super obsessed with her and he has a crush on her and he's like this moody billionaire dude um he's a little bit of a stalker but she doesn't know that yet um and i am on chapter six of this already because i did start this a few weeks ago but i just haven't um made the time for it so i've already read like that much and i gotta read this much i'm so obsessed with how floppy this paperback is like it makes me so happy so yeah i'm gonna be reading that and i'll update you when something happens
I'm currently on chapter 8 is page uh, 77 and so far my initial thoughts are pretty much the same thoughts that drove me away from the book in the first place because I, I started this in June and it's currently August that I'm filming this um, and I just really don't feel like Stella and Christian have chemistry. I think in their two or three like initial interactions that we really get to see between them i just don't feel like the chemistry and i think that in twisted games and in twisted hate i immediately felt the chemistry and the spark and just the vibe was incredibly strong and interesting and fun between reese and bridget and between josh and jules like immediately first interaction was slaying and i just feel like stella and christian are not giving me that um so i mean i definitely we'll try to read like a bit more and see what comes of it but i just don't feel like they're slaying you know um so i think maybe i'll try to get to mm, maybe like page 150 and then i will come back and see like how i'm feeling if i want to continue this if it's still not giving if it's still boring by page 150 then i will instead um hop into her good side by rebecca weatherspoon so yeah <sighs> my friends i have to dnf this book this is boring almost to a violent degree like it's not it's not making sense like uh, listen I definitely had some issues with Twisted Hate when I read that last year, but one thing that Anna Huang has always done for me previously is been able to sell chemistry between characters. And I do not at all believe in the chemistry between Stella and Christian, and I think that they're such boring people. And I think the fact that Christian is supposed to be this kind of like scary, super intelligent, mildly stalkerish dude, like it doesn't lean in heavily enough into that like vaguely unhinged scary dude thing that he's supposed to have going on because and maybe this is going to sound very uh, unwell on my part but if somebody is supposed to be scary then i want them to feel scary i want them to feel a little bit creepy i want to feel the vibes i want to feel a little bit unsettled by them and i don't feel unsettled by christian he just kind of seems like a pathetic loser i just feel like she's boring he's boring they're boring together they are just not they're not giving me anything to work with. And then the main plot line is about her, you know, being an influencer and she needs money to pay for some old lady in a nursing home that she's emotionally attached to and she's got a shitty family and I don't know. But it's like, girl, I really don't care. I'm so sorry you're going through that, but I don't care. And also, she has like a stalker or something. And it's like, what am I, what am I supposed to do with this? Like, it's, you'd think it'd be interesting. You'd think it'd be interesting, like, rich, millionaire, billionaire type romance, influencer, fake dating, stalkers involved. I mean, it's all types of shit going on in the book. And yet, it's like watching paint dry. It just is terrible, bro. It's terrible. And I was reading a Goodreads review because I was like, you know, maybe the Goodreads review is going to help me realize realize whatever it is i need to realize to understand what's going on in here and they're like this book is so fun and i'm like is the fun in the room with us right now because i don't see it they lost me they lost me she's just not eating it she's not so it's time to get into this i didn't bring my phone up here with me when i decided to turn on the camera but um i think we're like 20 hours into the challenge i don't know why i put my finger in the camera like that but I think we're like 20 hours into the challenge. So let's see how much of this we can get read in the last four hours that we have left. And I am going to go drink the rest of my wine. It's not very strong, but it does taste good. of her good side and then timer ran out of time so this is the end of the 24 hours of reading time but i think 
that I kind of set myself up a little bit because I feel like I'm in a really strong fantasy mood on the heels of finishing up the tarot sequence. And so I think that I kind of set myself up trying to read Twisted Lies. Also, Twisted Lies is just bad, but like trying to read Twisted Lies, which is a contemporary romance, and then trying to read this YA romance, which I don't want to say trying like I'm failing at it. Like the YA romance is cute and everything. It's fine. I like it. But I just feel like I'm in the mood to read like a fantasy and I want magic and monsters and all that kind of stuff and not necessarily like silly high school drama or like ridiculous contemporary romance. So I think that I set myself up but I'm excited to dive into some other fantasy books this month and I'm really glad that I did this little reading challenge for myself because I'm proud of myself. I'm happy about this because I did end up finishing um, some stuff that was like on my currently reading shelf on Goodreads and I'm trying to catch up on my Goodreads goal because I'm actually behind. So I think, let's see, I focus. But I'm on track now. Can you guys see that? Thank you so much for watching this video. And I also am going to quickly plug my merch. I have merch, which will be linked in the description below. And uh, I just put up like a new design on there. It's like says Monster Romance Girly because I'm planning to do like this Monster Romance video. And so I wanted to make merch for it. So that's up. I've already launched that. And I also have my Bad Bitches Read Romance shirts as well as I have like tote bags and mugs now and all that good stuff. So it's cute. Just check it out. Link will be in my description. These are what the designs look like and thank you so much for watching i'll see you in my next video hopefully bye you guys Mwah.